Hey, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Alex, coming at y'all with a brand new video. And as you guys can see, we're here back with another tier list. This one being with the small forwards. We're already on the point guards and shooting guards. So if you guys want to see those, I'll link those down in the description down below. Make sure you guys smash the like button if you guys are excited for this video or if you enjoy at all. And make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as well on that road to 10K subscribers. Now, the thing about this is I had a few people ask is we take into account all of these cards without any badges that you could possibly add to them just the base form of the cards i don't feel like it's fair to rate them all on you know how many badges you can add what badges you can add and all that sort of stuff we're just going to straight up rate these cards just bare bones what 2k gave us just for future reference none of the uh, badge i guess possibilities will be taken really into account but just know that there's a lot of cards that could be real real good once you add some badges to it so first off we have the wonderful bob dandridge who honestly gets pretty nice after evo because he's just an absolute demigod um now he's a little bit undersized i will say that you know being six foot six it is a little bit tough i'm not gonna lie i would prefer if he was a little bit taller <laughs> like uh, it does hurt me a little bit, but with Bob Dandridge, he does have some really nice defense, you know, has some really solid gold badges. He's got gold clamps as well. You know, he can finish inside of the basket really, really good, and he's a decent shooter. He's nothing crazy, but he's definitely not too bad. So I honestly really like this Bob Dandridge card, um, but I'm going to put him into the B tier because I feel like at six foot six, he has a little bit to be desired um, height wise at the three. Um, so I feel like he can just sit there nice and pretty and also his release it, it's not the greatest uh next up we have bernard king who honestly makes his way just for how great of a finisher he is that's really about it he's just an insane slasher um which really helps him out and he's six foot seven at the small forward in the two guard which is really nice seven foot wingspan two all the fame badges contact and relentless has a really nice midi really good driving dunk he can almost speed boost off rip has really nice speed but has no quick first step um his shooting from three is absolutely horrid but his mid-range is really nice um if i'm being honest i think bernard king is a a tier card i don't think he is fully there to be s tier you know there's a lot of other guys that i feel like are just slight notches ahead of him so i think a tier is is suitable for bernard king he's not a bad card by any means but he's not one that I would consider top tier. Uh, next up, we have the Sapphire Ben Simmons. Now, if we were taking into account the fact that he was Ruby um, with that Joel B duo, oh, would he be nice? Because his shot close goes up massively. I think he goes up to like a 90 driving dunk as well. Um, it's a really good lateral quickness. And overall, he's just a really nice card, even as bronze clamps. But the thing about this Ben Simmons is although he has a massive player build, um, and he's really good finishing in the basket because he's 6'10". He doesn't have any sort of quick first step, so he's not going to feel as fast as his speed does say. And his shooting is literally non-existent. So um, when I've gone against people using him in TTO, you don't even have to guard him when they have you know Ben Simmons with the ball in his hand. Um, I feel like when it comes to unlimited, this Ben Simmons is probably like a D tier. When it comes to like triple threat, he could be a B or an A tier. Um, so I think a nice little happy medium would be probably to throw him over here into the C tier just because he's a, uh, you know, he's leaving a little bit to be desired because he can't even hit the midis. Like, I think his midi is actually worse than his three point shot, which is absolutely horrid. But next up, we have Andre Iguodala, who I absolutely love. Iggy is just an amazing card. Uh, for some reason, I've hated his release in previous years, but this year, it feels nice. But the thing with Iggy is his three-point shot is only 73, so it's a little bit tough. His mid-range is a 64, so he really can't be hitting those. Um, he has a really good driving dunk of an 85, and his defense is superb. Has a bunch of good defensive badges, and even with his uh, shooting from three not being absolutely amazing, I still actually quite like it. And he has a really nice moving behind the back in Pro 5. So Iggy, I think overall, is a really good card. I'm tossed up between the B um, and the A tier, but like I said with Bomb Dandridge, only six foot six, so it's a little bit tough to fully warrant throwing him up um, really high. So even though his defense is absolutely insane, the lack of offense outside of the paint, I feel like really hinders him. Uh, next up, Trevor Ariza. And 
th this one's a little bit tough for me because I love the fact that he's uh, a really nice um, 3 and D player, but at the same time, his badges are just, they're booty, man. Uh, he's got a good jump shot. He has gold catch and shoot, but most of his badges are silver, only has bronze clamps. Um, he has a good driving dunk, but he really has no quick first step, and he's pretty slow. So getting him into the paint to get those dunks are um, pretty tough. So I know that a lot of people love, you know, that amazing, I guess, 3 and D aspect of it. But as he is, I don't think I can really warrant having him higher. But in saying that, if you were to go ahead and um, give him, you know, gold clamps, gold pick dodger, you know, upgrade those. And if he's got the possibility of giving him a quick first step and maybe, you know, gold hot zone hunter. If you were to batch him up. You could probably sneak him into A tier, but I think as Te Trevor Ariza is, I really don't think he's that amazing. He has the potential to go up for sure, but at this point, not really a card that I personally would recommend or really use myself. Next up, we have the Ruby Tony Kukoc, who is an amazing card. He has the Brook Lopez base, which is probably the best base in the game that a lot of players have right now. Like... I cannot tell you how easy it is to green with this Brook Lopez base. I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love it. He has nine gold badges, and he's really going to be just an insane shooter. That's really what you're picking Tony Kukoc up for. Um, he's 6'10", so he is pretty tall, and his defense is pretty lackluster, if I'm being honest. That's the one thing that really hurts me with this Tony Kukoc is he's got like a 66 speed, so he's pretty slow, and his defense really is almost non-existent. Um, I went up against him in a game of triple threat and with Chris Dallas Porzingis who's not even you know that physical of a force inside it was a drop set every time in a bucket so well he's got really nice all-around offensive game his defensive game is very very suspect like very very suspect but um, I think for the fact of how great a shooter he is I can throw him into the A tier um, possibly because I know a lot of people love him but with his lack of defense I, I don't recommend him uh, to too many people. Next up, we have the Ruby St Emerald Stacy Augman, and I threw this card in because I really liked him at the beginning of the year, but going back to him and looking at him, he's really only just a person that can finish inside. His shooting's awful. He's really slow. The defense isn't there at all. Stacy Augman, as an Emerald card, is um, D tier. I feel like he's even, as like a normal card, he's D tier, just taking it into account. And then I think even as an Emerald, he might be one of the lower tier Emeralds as well. Stacy Augman. Probably not one of those guys you're going to pick up unless you really, really want to um, finish off those XP challenges. The next guy we got is my boy, Sean Marion. 6'7", six 6'10", six wingspan, has one Hall of Fame badge being Rebound Chaser, which is massive. And the thing about Sean Marion is he's a defender who can't play defense because 2K makes a lot of sense. Sean Marion was an amazing defender, rebounder, and all around just, you know, energy guy that they threw in, especially in this Phoenix Sundays. And if you go to his card, you can even check for yourself. He has amazing defensive stats, has a bunch of gold defensive badges, but they do not include clamps. So, again, like last year, they gave us a really good Sean Marion card, and then the lack of clamps kills him. He also has a pretty bad jump shot as well, which is not exactly something that you you want to use just because of his upper release it's just so easy to send it to the fifth row that um i really can't love it too much um i don't think he's bad as like a stacy augman level but i don't think he's a very usable card um too much you know you can definitely get some worth out of him but not as much as you would hope for it uh, next up, we have my boy Pip, Scotty Pippen. The reward that you get, I think, for level 33 from the season awards, which is pretty nice. I'm slowly making my way over there after unlocking Elgin. But six foot eight with a seven foot three wingspan, pretty nice card overall. Again, the main draw to him is defense. Usually, Scotty in early game cards are defenders and playmakers, but this year he really doesn't have any sort of playmaking either to help him out. It's just defense and. I think for what he does, he's definitely one of the better ones in there, just playing defense. But um, if we were to take into account his just overall game, his playmaking really just isn't that great. His dribbling animations aren't amazing. He can't really shoot. His jump shot is eh, it's okay. But and even then, he can. He has some good finishing stats, but not a lot of good finishing badges. So I think. 
for his defense alone, I can put him above these three guys because these three guys really just don't have the most amazing defense, but I for sure wouldn't say he's amazing. It's kind of like pick your poison type thing. You know, with a guy like Trevor Ariza, you're probably going to hit, hit a few more threes, get a little bit more offense. Same with Ben Simmons, you're probably going to get some decent finishes at the basket. With Scotty, you're probably not going to get too many threes. You're going to get some good finishes at the basket, and you're going to get defense. So it's like, what do you really want out of it? And I think Scotty's defense is just really hard to ignore. Next up, Rolando Blackman. This one for me, I feel like, is a toss between A and S tier, depending on what you're feeling like with him. Because, I mean, let's be honest, Rolando Blackman actually has a really good release. I actually quite like it. It makes it really nice to use with the stick. Now, he is better as a shooting guard for sure, but he has quick first step, one of the badges that you really want. He has hot zone hunter, he's got catch and shoot, and he has amazing finishing badges. In the paint, this guy's a beast. He can speed boost as well, which is amazing off rip with a simple um, coach boost. Only he's a plus two to get there. He's actually really quick as well. And again, I just love his animations. Now, the one thing that's tough with him is he has a high foul tendency, but his contest shot and block shot are good. Not that it matters too much for a big man, but overall, he's a pretty decent card. And I think, you know, S tier, I mean, not S tier, A tier uh, works for him pretty well. If you wanted to knock him down in the B tier, I could perfectly understand it. But I think he's an overall really solid card that just, you know, he's just there, gives you a few buckets and then dips. The next guy that we got on our list is Richard Jefferson, who, again, is a pretty tough um, card for me to rank because every year his release is always pretty bad, <laughs> you know? But he's got 13 gold badges and can really finish in the paint at will. Like, at will. 95 driving dunk, and it's just amazing. Now, he's got a lot of um, pretty decent stats, but his defense is okay, but has silver clamps, which helps him out. Has a good three-point shot, has a good midi. Has some decent shooting badges to help him out. Um, his tendencies are mad, but he's got a decent jump shot. Jump shot 57. I'm pretty sure it's the one that he's had uh, for most of the time. Um, dribbling animations really aren't too bad. And overall, he's just a solid card. But I'm not exactly sure how much I'm jumping to use um, Richard Jefferson again. I feel like he's a really solid card, but not one that uh, I would use. And because... I guess my philosophy with Bernard King was that I didn't like Bernard King just because his shooting wasn't the greatest and he can't play defense, but he's a great finisher at the basket. Richard Jefferson, great finisher at the basket, can play some defense, and can shoot threes. So, you know, I guess I do have to put him a, a tier above um, Bernard King just for logic's sake, I guess, if I were to pay attention that way. Yeah, we'll put Richard Jefferson in that tier because he's definitely, I definitely would say he's probably a bit better than Bernard King, Kukoc, and Rolanda Black. Next up, we got my guy Purvis Short, who, if I'm being honest, I, I've never really found too impressive in any of his time um, in the 2K game. But 6'7", which is actually really nice. He's got a lot of gold badges, which are nice. His defense has some good stats there, but really can't play it too much. Has really good um, finishing ability, though. I will give him that. And a decent three-point shot. He can speed boost with a little bit of a coach boost. Has the Vince Carter release, which isn't too bad. Some decent playmaking. Um, but... With Purvis Short, I feel like I just get a whole lot of average from him. That's the uh, the vibe that he gives me. So, P tier, uh, that's cool for me. And Peja Stajakovic, I feel like this one is... We're fighting for that bottom tier spot. Is he C? Is he getting his ass down in D tier? I really, <laughs> you know, I'm not too sure. But with Peja, the thing with him every year is his release is just butt cheeks. Uh, now, the one thing that's saving him is he's an amazing shooter. But... His defense is non-existent. He can't play in the post. He can't finish at the basket. He can't speed boost with any playmaking at all. He can't rebound the ball. He's slow as hell. So he really and truly is only in there to shoot. So I feel like I got to put his ass down in the D tier. I feel like Pages Dejakovic just, he's never it, man. He's just, I feel like in older games, like 2K17, he used to be amazing. But in 19, 20, and 21, just get out of here. Paul Pierce. I think probably the easiest card to rank in the entire game. He's asked here. Come on. Paul Pierce can do everything. Has amazing jump shot. Awesome defense. He can finish at the basket. Insane. He's just a beauty. And I mean a beauty of a card. And same goes with Paul George. Paul George probably has one of my favorite bases in the entire game this year. Which is crazy. Because he used to be one of my least favorites last year. But he is just an all-around beast. I feel like if I had to rank one card that everybody who... Heck, has a god squad is putting on their team 
it's going to be Paul George. He has two Hall of Fame badges, which are chased down. And Pogo Stick, he's got gold clamps already, even silver qu quick first step. He's got some nice shooting badges as well, which, if you were to badge up, would be amazing. Has a really nice speed, really good defense, really good finishing at the basket. He can speed boost off rip. And just overall is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card. So check out Paul George. Pick him up if you have it. He's a beast, man. Absolute beast. Now, next up, we have Otto Porter's Emerald card, which dropped in the season tip off East. And honestly, if I had to be honest, I, I said honestly, if I have to be honest, he's a decent card. Um, and again, it's the same situation with Pages Stajakovic. He's kind of just in there to shoot. His defense really is not existent. His finishing at the basket is not existent. His post game not existent. His playmaking is meh. He's kind of slow. And he can shoot decent. And he also doesn't even have nearly as many badges as Peja Stojakovic does. So he's an even worse shooter than Peja. So if I had to rank them, um, Otto would definitely be below Peja. But he still, I feel like, is in the D tier. If we're, if we're being honest, he ain't that great. Next up, we got Mark Aguirre. My guy. Who, again, I feel like I've never really been impressed with any of his cards that he's better the game with. But 6'6", six 6'9", six, six wingspan. He's Overall, he's like one of those cards that's really good at everything. Or good at everything, but not amazing at anything. But I guess post-game as a small forward. Which is interesting that that's something that he's good at. But he's got a nice jump shot, which will help him out. And he's really just meant to be, I guess, a post-small forward with some really nice finishing. Um... That's not exactly something that gets me excited. So B tier he is. He's a good guard, but yeah. Again, I'm really not jumping out to use him. He's just, he's a decent card, but he's definitely not amazing. Now, next up we have LeBron James. Now with this LeBron James card, the thing that's tough for me is LeBron James actually has one of the best jump shots in the entire game when it comes to like green window, as well as a really good make percentage as well. I think of all the jump shots that have been tested so far, LeBron James actually has the biggest green window, which is massive, like massive. But the thing with LeBron James is we're in another case where we don't have any gold badges as a base card. So if you were to badge him up, probably could be actually really nice. Um, but he's got good speed, good playmaking, good driving dunk. He can shoot a little bit. And again, with that good release, probably really well if you know what you're doing. Um, his tendencies, or at least contest shot, are amazing. And it's LeBron. He's got some pretty solid dribbling moves, but he has this pretty <laughs> pretty bad layup package, um, which is always pretty shitty every year. But um, I feel like very mid-tier. I feel like, you know, B-tier is where I got to throw him. Uh, next up, Larry Bird. Again, easy one, S-tier. Larry Bird just has a beautiful jump shot, like a beautiful, beautiful jump shot, some great defense um, that you can use on there. Now, the only thing I feel like is a little bit tough with Larry is he's not the greatest dunker and he's a little bit slow but he has range center on gold he's got hawk catch and shoot so he's gonna be beautiful and silver clamps I really don't feel like there's a time and place to put Larry out of S tier um he definitely will be one of the first guys I think to fall down a tier like fall down a peg but he's still amazing and you really can't hate on it and next up we got Lamar Odom again this is another one that's like a little bit tough for me because Lamar Odom I'm pretty sure if you badge him up can get clamps but he doesn't have it on his lonesome also doesn't have quick first step his finishing is actually otherworldly and his um, dribbling is amazing but they did change Lamarcus Aldridge release so it's not as good and he's another one of those cards where I feel like we are at that jack of all trades master of none again kind of card and if I'm being honest, I'm debating throwing Lamar Odom in to the A tier just because I feel like uh, he's that he's missing that defense that everybody up here in the S tier already has. Paul George, gold clamps, Larry Bird, silver. Paul Pierce, I think, has gold. Richard Jefferson has silver. And all of these guys are guys that are amazing but are lacking a little bit in defense. So I feel like Lamar Odom fits with the A tier, but it's really, really tough for me because I'm a massive Lamar Odom fan. I love his cards in the game. It, 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 it's tough for me. I'm at, a, I'm at a conflicting conflicting decision here. But next up, we have Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant falls a victim to, again, the base cards not getting any um, gold badges, which is tough. But the great thing about KD is he does have silver range extender, but his defense is literally non-existent. Like, he has no form of clamps. He's got no form of really anything <laughs> to make him good on defense. Um, he's a good finisher. He's got a decent shot, um, some decent dribbling moves. But, I don't know, KD just wasn't a card that really jumped out to me. I had him and I used him for a while because I pulled him out of an aim at this pack. But 
I really wasn't very impressed, but I also don't think he's on the level of these guys down here. So I feel like I feel like B tier um, is it suits him. It, it fits him well. Next up, we got Kenny Walker. Kenny Walker, I think, is one of the cards that you get moving a long triple threat offline. I'm probably gonna be playing a lot of that for some XP soon. But 13 gold badges, six for eight, three in the four is beautiful. Has some nice finishing badges. Got silver hot zone hunter. Got some nice um, rebounding, but his defense is kind of shit. If we're being honest, he can play make. He's a little bit slow. His post game is meh, nah, but he's a good finisher. Good slash at the basket. So. You're getting with your boy Ben Simmons down here because I feel like you guys are very, very similar cards with very similar strengths and very similar weaknesses. So it only makes sense that you guys are together. Next up, Kawhi Leonard, his clutch player. And I love this Kawhi Leonard card. His jump shot is beautiful. Um, six foot seven, a seven foot three wingspan, and some really good defense. Now, the thing that hurts Kawhi is other than defense is really lackluster. But he's got that 73, so he's still definitely usable but i don't feel like you really could realistically have this Kawhi leonard any higher than like a b tier maybe i'm gonna put him in c because i definitely feel like he is worse than everybody that we have in b tier already um and i also think that his normal base card is b tier which you guys can see here so i feel like it just makes sense to have this Kawhi here in b tier the amethyst one and then put the sapphire down a tier below Next up, we have Joe Smith, who's a card that really has not impressed me. I picked him up, uh, hoping that as a 6'10", like small forward, power forward, he'd give me some nice stuff. But his main thing that he gives you is good post game and decent finishing at the basket. Actually, not decent. It's pretty, pretty good finishing at the basket. And he's not a bad rebounder either. But defensively, in the post, on the perimeter, anything that you could use really this guy for he's a little bit lackluster now he's he's got a good jump shot I, I will say that he's got a pretty nice jump shot but he's really not somebody that i'm jumping to use so i think i'm gonna throw him in c tier as well just really he's not my guy he, he's not my guy next up jimmy butler again another card where it's like you got really good defense but then what do you have outside of that and not too much Jimmy Butler, again, another one of the cursed normal cards that has a lot of badges, but none of them are gold. So as a base version of himself, really isn't that great. As Silver Clamps, good defender, but I really, again, don't think I can realistically put him above C tier. So he's got to sit there happy, is what it is. And next up, Jerome Kersey at Amethyst. This card is an absolute dog of a card, man. Absolute beast. This Jerome Kersey one of my favorite cards that we have in the game right now once evo because he's just a beast six foot seven at the three is actually really really solid has eight gold badges which help him out quite a bit when it comes to like the finishing aspect but he even has like silver clamps he's got silver intimidator he gets a bunch of nice badges there a bunch of good bronzos as well to help with finishing and he's just overall solid when it comes to everything else besides post game good mini good three point shot a really nice release amazing finishing awesome awesome defense all around good speed good rebounding for me jerome kersey fits solidly in the a tier at amethyst at ruby probably is down to b but at amethyst i definitely think that this um jerome kersey <laughs> fits solidly up there uh next up we have the ruby jason tatum that is part of the um, promo set that you can get out of the promo packs that you possibly could get so he's here um, another one of the cards that i feel like is cursed because he doesn't have a lot of um gold badges but is solid you now he's got bronze clamps he's got some good shooting badges that can help him out as well some nice stats really good finishing really good defense um good playmaking but i'm gonna have to drop him again down in to c tier because he was a really good card when the game first dropped but now as stuff has kind of gone on i feel like he's definitely dropped um i feel like if i had him i would definitely use him over somebody like kevin durant and Kawhi leonard just because of price first you want to be using him but is what it is next up elgin baylor and again if we're taking him into account after evo like we've done with all the other evo cards elgin baylor is s tier there's no doubt about it i just picked him up so i can actually see all of the wonderful boosts that he gets and my guy it's a grind to get him up there, but he gets a better mid-range, which makes it up to a 90. He gets better perimeter defense, which is almost a 90. Better dunking, which is amazing. He gets up to gold clamps. He gets gold pick dodger, gold pogo stick. 
Silver Finisher, Green Machine, Hot Zone Hunter, Volume Shooters, a bunch of great, great, great badges, and even as a pink diamond, he's already insane. The one negative I think you could for sure make with this Elgin Vela is the fact that he's only six foot five at the three, which is a very, very valid criticism. But I think with everything else that he's got going for him and how well he is, you know, playing for every single aspect of the game, I really don't think putting him anything lower than S is fair. Now, Carmelo Anthony, I'm gonna put at B tier. Now, he's obviously one of the starter cards, but I don't think he's insane by any means he's n not bad but he's not great he has a decent release but it's not a good one his animations are okay but they're not great i i feel like i have to throw camilla b and byron russell i'm throwing in to a tier i'm strong sitting with this one byron russell is one of my favorite guys to run at the shooting guard in the game and even at the small forward he is amazing because his defense is clamps it is locked down i still run him in my starting lineup on god because he's six foot eight, which is beautiful. He's got gold catch, gold corner, um, off ball pass, and slippery. He's got pick dodger, clamps, heart crusher, title defender, trapper, and green machine, and hot zone hunter all on silver, which are just beautiful. Has a really solid three point shot of an 84. Has some decent finishing in the paint. It's not great, but it's definitely not bad. I just love his defense. I love everything about him. His release is nice and slow, so you can really time it well, but not slow to the point where like it's horrible. Absolutely love it. So my guy byron russell in there at a tier next up we have bonzi wells i'm throwing him into b d tier sorry he's getting his ass down there i absolutely like hate his jump shot um he doesn't really provide me with anything but that um, gold clamps on defense which i think he's got gold clamps if not then he really <laughs> provides me nothing because i just again I haven't found too much use with him. I picked him up because I remember seeing that he's a good defender, but he hasn't really given me um, too much. Actually, he doesn't have any form of clamps. I forgot about that. He has a really good um, like defensive stats, but then doesn't have clamps, which makes him kind of useless. But, you know, it is what it is. And last but not least, we have Robert Reed, who is, a net, again, another solid card. One of the ones that actually dropped just recently um, in the most recent set the one will rise playoff dimers um and with robert reed he's actually a really solid card it's a jump shot for base which is really nice has some decent playmaking badges no defense though himself has some nice shooting has some nice playmaking um but again another card that has some really nice offensive stats without quick first step and completely lacks in the defensive aspect has some decent dribbling moves some decent you know overall animations but doesn't give me too much but he is for sure not bad as bad as these guys in d tier so i feel like um c tier is the lowest that he can go and maybe you could throw him into b um if you're really feeling like spicy you know if you really love robert reed you were using him and you're like oh my god he's amazing you could throw him to b tier it really doesn't matter too much to me um this is our final rankings for the best small forwards in 2 years 21 my team let me know what you guys think about this list down in the comment section below who's your favorite small forward at this point in time that you've used Mine's gotta be Elgin Baylor, you know, working him up to Opal, having some fun. So let me know what your guys' is down in the comment section below. Make sure you guys like them, if you guys did enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new on that road to 10k subscribers. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see y'all in the next video.